If you like this video, please consider supporting the Otokana channel over on Patreon. Thank you. In this episode, we are taking a close look at the Jedite Genuine by Daniel Smith. Jedite the mineral is one of the two mineral recognized as gemstone jade. The other one is nephrite. It comes in a wide range of colors from white, pale green, deep jade green, blue green, pink, lavender, and many other colors. Jadeite Genuine, the paint, has a really deep muted green color, almost like the greens you find in a winter forest and close to a perylene green. It has a very high tinting strength and therefore also have a huge range of values. It is easy to re-wet and get lovely saturated colors from. Jadeite is one of the six colors that come in the Daniel Smith Primatech set. If you are new to the Primatech range, this set is an economical way to try out some of the best colors from the range. Daniel Smith's website says, this exceptionally beautiful Primatech color is made from the more strongly colored of the two minerals known as jade. The other is nephrite. Used for eons in China and Central America, this gemstone now becomes a spectacular artist's color. From deep dark green mass tones to the palest wash, it creates all the exquisite shades we think of when we think of jade. It is a relatively expensive color being a series four, classified as excellent in light fastness, semi-transparent, non-staining, and granulating. We are back and this is Jedi. Isn't this a beautiful, beautiful deep green color? It's such a rich foresty green color. I fell in love with it the moment I started swatching this for you. It has even bigger range of values than the diopside that we saw in the previous episode. From almost black, very dark green, all the way to the palest of greens. It's interesting to see though that in certain points like here and here, that the color becomes this unexpectedly bright green compared to the rest of the range of values, which are more muted colors. That same thing can be seen in these washes. In this one, it's round about here. Usually where it goes from the mid-tone to the lighter tones, you get this luminescent green color happening. You do also get to see hints of almost a turquoise blue color in its lightest value, but you will see the darkest values of this color in the granulation around about the mid-tone area. Most colors work great on all kinds of paper. However, this one color, I have to say, for certainly the Bockingford hot press paper, it created this very uneven wash where some parts are bright green, whilst others are this really uneven texture of dark, muted, almost black tones. So I would personally avoid using this color on Bockingford hot press paper. And if you do work on hot press paper yourself, I would do little patch tests to see how it behaves on hot press paper of your choice, just to make sure that it's going to behave the way you expect it to. Otherwise, it's a great color to do washes with. It does do a little bit of cauliflowering compared to say the Jedi, because Jedi was so great at handling water. However, do remember that I put an excess amount of water into these washes so that you can see this color almost at its worst. So if this color performs well in this test, then you're not gonna have anything to worry about in your normal painting practice. Now let's take a look at opacity down here on the left. And this color is classified as semi-transparent. And I would say I agree with this because I'm not sure if it will come through in the camera, but I do see a tiny amount of deposit on the left hand side 
of the bar where the mass tone of this color i see clear outlines of that color on the bar so you do definitely see some deposits just not much which is perfect classification as a semi-transparent color in terms of staining though this color is classified as no staining and i have to very much disagree with this this color will stain you will not get this paper back to white you get the staining from the green color but you also get the black granulation stuck in the pits of your paper so this is definitely not a non-staining color in terms of glazing it does create clear layers of glazing however as with many granulating colors when you start layering mass stones of granulating colors you do get this slight appearance of more brownish color coming through so i'm not sure if that is a desirable effect for you or not but it's something to bear in mind when you're layering this color in strong layers in terms of gauzing this color gauzes very well with the green happening in the background and then a very strong forest green almost black linear pattern appearing in terms of salting it doesn't do the feathering effect that we come to expect from using salt however with this color the way it textures with salt reminds me of like a mossy stone happening which could be useful in a landscape painting or even a fantasy kind of painting where mossy green rocks are in use with much brighter or stronger colors than it is in nature in terms of water blooms not really a recommended color it kind of feathers but it's not a very clear feathering and it doesn't look the prettiest now let's take a look at how the color mixes and these are the 12 colors i mixed the jadeite with and these are the result and i have to say i love the color jedi creates i would put this color amongst the transparent red and brown oxide and soda light genuine as a very good mixing color this color can create some rich deep tones with whatever color you mix it is a green color but it is more of a muted turquoisey color with this green undertone so slightly unexpectedly for a green color the complementary color is more about the red orange color than what we would expect for a green which will be down here I would say that this is the most muted out of the 12 colors that we tried the color creates this gorgeous rich green with the cadmium yellow light and then this deep rich velvety almost chocolatey winey color with the permanent red and slightly muted pinks and purples but then creates these gloriously beautiful and deep and rich blues and greens so all in all i would say that this is a brilliant mixing color let's take a look at how jedi compares with other colors i kept mentioning this color when i was looking at the diopside and saying that the jedi is the closest one out of the colors i tried however it is a much deeper green color and i just wanted to show you what i meant by this this is diopside and this is jedi and as you can see the diopside is a much brighter green whereas the jedi is a more muted green so when it's just a line it looks pretty similar but if you use it on a larger area especially around about this band of mid-tones you will see a big difference between the two colors however i do feel that these two are one of those colors where if you have one you don't really need the other one because if you have the jedi then you can kind of create diopside by just going a little bit lighter and if you have the diopside then you only need to mute it down with its complementary color which is around about the magenta and the queen violet kind of color then you would get a more muted version which would look pretty similar to jedi besides the diopside we have the deep sap green which is i would say it's pretty close and compared to the diopside 
I would say these two are closer than this color. And then we have green appetite genuine, which is to yellow as well as the undersea green. And in fact, actually these two are pretty close to each other. The peridine green is too dark and I would say too blue. Then we move on to Holbein's dark green range and we have shadow green, which their shadow green is a peridine green, but I would say that it's even more muted than the Daniel Smith one, so not close to the Jedi. Then we have green grey, which is almost like a chromium oxide green colour and not as green as the Jedi. Then the Holbein's Terravert, which is too light in value. But I would also say that if you add a little bit of green to it and darken it a little bit, then you might get quite close to the Jedi. Then we have dark and muted greens from Sennelier. And this is Sennelier's Forest Green, which in terms of value is a great match, but the Forest Green is a little bit too blue. Chromium Oxide Green is too yellow, and the Snellia Sap Green is again too yellow. And I also tried the Daniel Smith Chromium Green Oxide, which was also too yellow, although not as yellow as these two colours. If you've really enjoyed this series and you've been itching to try them, but you don't really want to invest quite yet in the full price tubes, and you just want to try a little bit, then you're in luck because this month's Patreon World dot card is the part two of the Daniel Smith Primatech range. On this dot card, we have eight colors again, including the Kingman Green Genuine right here, which the only other way of trying this is buying the full expensive tube because you don't get this even on Daniel Smith's 240 color dot cards. They are all lovely, lovely colours and you get plenty of paint to play with. So you really, really get to see what the colours can do for you before having to commit to full tubes. If you'd like to receive this card, then head on over to patreon.com forward slash autocarno and be signed up to the appropriate tiers on that page before the 30th of November. So that was Jedi Genuine by Daniel Smith. It is a wonderful mixing colour. I would have this on my palette purely for how great it mixes with other colours and the rich colours it can create. Maybe I should start putting together a good mixing colour palette. I'll, I'll keep you updated on that project. It is an easy colour to work with because it does the gradated washes very easily. However, you do have to watch out for these surprising peaks of bright green if you are using it at its more lighter mid-tones. So what did you think of this colour? Would you give this colour a try? Do let me know in the comments down below. And if Jedi is one of your favourite colours on your palette, then please do let me know in the comments down below how you like to use this colour. If this video was useful to you, then please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.